Welcome to Small Talk Daily for Monday, January 11th, 2010. This morning I'd like to go over a new feature of VisualWorks 7.7, and that's the support for ActiveX components being embedded inside VisualWorks UIs. So to show you that, what we need to do first is go to the Parcel Manager, because we need to load the support. So once that comes up, you'll notice that a quick tour through here, it doesn't appear to be in here, and that's because COMAL doesn't include the ActiveX support. It's not in this suggested list, I'm not sure why. What you need to do is go over to the Directories tab. And you select COM, and here you pick ActiveX All, that's just a loader. Loading this will take a little while because it brings in the COM support and the ActiveX support. Once that's in, what we can do now is build a UI with a control in it. Now I'm going to bring this all into the view so you can see what I'm doing. And first thing I want to point out is you'll notice there's this new thing here, the ActiveX control, and that's what we're going to play with. So I'll do that first. I'm going to pick this, drop it down here. Now once it's in here, I'm going to come over to my Properties tool. And first I'm just going to specify an aspect so I can work with it. And then the prog ID is where the complexity is. So let's pick this, and under here you have an alphabetical list of all the components that are installed on Windows that I have access to. This will, of course, vary by your system. I happen to have QuickTime, and all of the videos I record for Smalltalk Daily are in QuickTime, so I'll pick that. Now, once that's done, I can apply this. Now, if I go over here to Properties, you can find that there are a whole bunch of things I could specify, but I'm going to do this at runtime, so I'm going to leave all of that alone. What I'm going to do now, though, is pause the recording, and I'm going to make the UI bigger, put in an input field and a button. The input field is going to take an URL. The button is going to load the URL into the ActiveX control. Once I get that all done, I'll bring you back in and show you what I've done. Okay, so what I've got here now is I've got my control here down at the bottom. Beneath the view, you can see I've got an input field and a button. And the input field is just going to be for me to type in an URL, and then the button is going to be for me to load the URL. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit Install, and I'm going to install this in a class called My Player. I'm going to just hit OK on that, let it go to all the defaults, and then I'm going to hit Define, and that's going to define everything behind all the things. Now let me deselect My Player and just go ahead and have it define everything. So I will go ahead and do an, a define again. Now it's going to specify load my player and URL for everything I've got. And at this point I can close this for a moment because I can go back to the browser and show you how to write the actual code to load things in. So let's see what we've got first. Let's go down here to the package I've created, which is my player. And I've got this, and here I've got my control, which is an external control proxy. If you wanted to know what APIs this guy supported, not the proxy, but the actual underlying control, I've shown you this tool before. If you go to COM and you go to Browse Automation Classes, this brings up a four-pane browser on all of the automation controls and classes that are in Windows. So you could go here and browse, and that's how I found the APIs that I'm about to show you here. So I'm, rather than do that, I'll leave that as an exercise to the user. I'm going to go to Load, though, and I'm going to do two things. The QuickTime player is self my player value because it's a value holder and it is the dispatch driver. That'll drive down into it and get the actual control itself. And having that, I can say QT set URL. This is the API I spoke of. And I'll do self URL value. And we should probably error check there to make sure that there's something in there. But I'm just going to assume that I typed in. So we'll hit proceed. The reason it's not finding this API is this is not a Smalltalk API. This is a an ActiveX API, one that obviously Smalltalk can't see. So I'll hit proceed on that. And I'll declare QT as a temporary variable. And now having done that, let's go ahead and open this. So we're going to come over here. And we're just going to type open and do a do it on this. Okay, so I'm putting in one of the screencasts I did last week, and I'm going to hit load. Okay, so now you can see it's in there. Now again, the player itself is a little below your view. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit play, and you won't be able to hear this, but you will be able to see the stuff is happening on the screen. So you can see the mouse is moving and things are happening. So what I've done here is I've embedded the QuickTime control into a VisualWorks window, and I've got an input field and a button that allows me to go ahead and play that. So this is something you can now do using VisualWorks. You can go ahead and build an application and have it map in a Windows component, a standard one that you use for other applications, and then 
take advantage of things that already exist. So instead of having to build everything yourself in Smalltalk, if you're on Windows, you can take advantage of that entire class of things that other people have built, and you can leverage that other work. So that's about it for today. Until next time, have fun with Smalltalk.